Okay, so uh, let's get started. So uh, I've got a URL at the top there, um, which I'm going to try this, see if it works. But apparently if you go there, you should be able to ask me some questions later. And the idea being, if we don't have time for me to answer them at the end of the talk, I can go through my laptop and I can have a look at and try and get back to you with, with questions or even on Twitter or whatever. Tweet out the answers. So, uh, passwords. Uh, let's go with who am I and why should you listen to me at all. Um, but anyway, Richard Hicks is my name, uh, otherwise known as uh, Script Monkey. Uh, Ten plus years in offensive security, doing pen testing, last five in uh, more red teamy stuff, attacking more financial institutions in the last year or two um, in purple teaming for a, a large UK insurance company. So, um, and before that, if I had to told you, I'd have to wake you up afterwards government IT contracting um, and I happen to like Star Trek which might come across a little bit in this presentation so apologies if you're a Star Wars fan um, I am not an IT support engineer that is not my work pass but it works as one well if you need it <laughs> so if you see me with an IT support lanyard around my neck report me um, okay so okay so a day in a past life um, in, a, in a previous life I used to manage the um password cracking rig for a large security consultancy um, and that meant uh, trying to wrangle like 40 pen testers who all wanted to use a single resource um, in, <laughs> to play nicely with each other over this limited resource and stuff so this is just sort of a typical day so I'd wake up in the morning on a Monday and go oh my god <laughs> then I'd uh, have myself some I keep on hitting the wrong button really. <laughs> have myself some coffee or little grey tea hot yeah um and everything would start feeling better, and I'd settle down to work, and sometimes call upon my friends to help me out with that work if things got a little bit too difficult. But it's okay, because we generally succeeded, a little bit of root dance. And then I'd check my emails <laughs> about the password cracking rig, and I would see, invariably see, the rig is broken, the rig is slow, um, oh my goodness, uh, nothing is working at all, etc. Um, and uh, the, the thing is, about password cracking is it's not really like recognized as a skill I suppose inside of like professional circles it's it's almost assumed knowledge uh, to a lot of degree like tool plus word list times rules plus hash list equals plain school birth right but that'll get you some that'll get you results but really that's not how this works or it shouldn't be right so it shouldn't be the, how any of this works um, and that's what my talk is about it's applying some common sense because I would invariably log onto the cracking rig, and I'd see something like this. Um, and I don't know, like, I don't know if you can actually read that, but someone set off a job for Blowfish or Bcrypt. Yeah, that's going to take forty-one thousand years to complete exhaustively. Yeah, and it's doing eighty hashes a second. Like, what is the point of running that dictionary against that that, that hash? It's it, the amount of words you're clearing. Is, is next to none in comparison to where you could be if you were doing something more intelligent. You'd be spending your time cracking, um, spending your time making educated guesses versus uh, a candidate of spring 1990 in 2022. So, yeah, good old Picard's reaction there. Um, so, like I said, they would come, I would get emails and they would say, oh, hash catch broken, everything's everything knackered. Um, and invariably, I'd be sent a screenshot. Something that looks like that, line length exception, token uh, delimiter not found, or token, token delimiter exception, etc. Um, and I would say every time, I don't think I've found one time that the rig was at fault. It was because they switched dict with hash list in the ordering on the command, so just a gotcha that, that's quite common. Or they're using the wrong um, minus M, so the attack, uh, sorry, the hashing mode, the hashing algorithm. Um, it's specified by a number in the command line. They're using the wrong number. Maybe they've copied the command from when they were previously doing another hash type, and now they've moved from uh, net enter the MV2 to enter the M straight, um, and they've just not updated from 5600 to, to 1000. Um, in that case, I would always end up sending them normally to the wiki, but in more recent editions of Hashcat, you can just run Hashcat minus minus example hashes and get an example. Um, print out of every hash that they support. Uh, some of the other things I'd see on there is people cracking it and not um, not setting the options to like optimal values. 
So um, work profile minus W. Uh, the difference between selecting work profile one, which you use go gently, and work profile four here is about uh, twice the speed on my on my. This is all on my laptop, right? So this is on my cracking. So please ignore the numbers in terms of like oh. Uh, that's quite slow, <laughs> but it's on my integrated graphics on my laptop. So yeah, so I've gone from 1,300 mega hashes a second to 2,582.9 in the benchmark mode, just by simply adding W4 to the, to the command line. Um, by default, Hashcat will do W2, so it'll, it'll pick work profile 2, so not nearly as bad as W1, but not as good as W4. There is a gotcha in that every guess is a GPU cycle, if you hog your GPU and you're running GUI programs, say X or, or um, you're, you're expecting like a GUI interface to be reactive, um, you can end up being in a situation where it's sort of like browsing by PowerPoint, using the, using the PC by PowerPoint. But if you're headless or you're, you're in there as SSH, for example, <coughs> go for it in W4. Um, it's been rare that I've seen things like this, so that, that I've seen it lock up in quite <coughs> such a way, but it can happen. Um, and there's something else as well that people keep forgetting about, which is minus O. So if you see on the left-hand side there, I've got optimized kernel in it. Um, in the center, I don't. I've not used minus O in my uh, command line. And even on work profile four, I'm only cracking, well, less than a thousand when I was up near two and a half before. So um, yeah, it makes a massive difference. Sorry. Trying to struggle to <laughs> try to struggle to breathe and the nerves, so be uh, with Sorry. <sighs> right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's with the optimized kernel. Uh, there is a trade-off in the. There's a length trade-off with common hashes. Hashcat will tell you um, if you have a look at the wiki. I can't remember the, the number off the top of my head, but it's like I think it's like thirty-two characters or longer um, in terms of passwords. The also, if you set it and Hashcat's like, well, this is a slow hash anyway, there's no benefit to an optimized kernel, I'm just going to use real mode, then it will tell you and disable it by default, like its own way. So it's almost always worth doing minus O. So, okay, we've covered sort of basics, <laughs> like some of the derps of Hashcat. Dictionaries. So this is almost like the, the main thrust of this talk, I suppose. Um, and it's to try and get people to think in a different way. So we all know custom dictionaries targeted towards your targets, your clients, are often the most successful, right? So typical sources using cool, uh, thanks to Ninja. Um, there's one here that I use uh, with an old colleague of mine called leakme.py. literally just turns <laughs> any word into a large... Uh, number of mutations of lead speak. Um, so I typically know company and then I throw numbers at the end of it for, for just a simple quick check. If I've already got access to the network, then I should be thinking about the dictionaries, like building dictionaries as I go. So if I'm as a domain user, why aren't I using names of the computers and servers that are in there? So pull it from AV, get that, create a, create a word list out of it. Um, there's a load of tools in Hashcat Utils that do things like permutations. Um, it will do combinations of two words, so every word in one list with every word in the other list, and output them. And it will even do up to three, um, but they give a warning of like both uh, the combinator side, side of life and in crunch. You can completely fill your hard drive if you, <laughs> if very, very quickly, if you get a command and you don't watch it. So just be very careful when you run those things. But yeah, so custom word bits are normally the way to go. Um, language specific. So this this has puzzled a lot of like junior pen testers. Like how do I how do I target like a German website? And it's like, well, most public breaches are international anyway. Right? So you'll have German words in there anyway. But if you really want a German dictionary, or in this case, a Welsh dictionary, um, sorry, I'm Welsh, but <laughs> yeah. Use the resources that you've got to hand. So A spell is a dictionary on, on Linux. You can blat out all of the um, A spell sort of stems with all of the A spell, um, I can't remember what you call the end of a word, the endings <laughs> of the words. 
into a into a text file, and all of a sudden, it's not necessarily all the words. Like I'm pretty sure some of those words are not Welsh, like they're complete nonsense. But it just basically puts all the stems of words with the endings, so all the leaves, the eds, etc. Um, but you end up with a nice list of mostly the language that you're looking for. Uh, the size matters, right? So bigger isn't always better. Um, when you're when you're testing a corporate environment, say for example, consider the case where there's a guest Wi-Fi network for I don't know Acme Corp down the road. They're using WPA2 PSK. It's just a guest network. They just want to secure it so they don't get randoms on there. Um, are they likely to use curse words, fudge you, you know, sugar, whatever? Yeah, um, in their password, they're not right. So why am I testing twenty five thousand of the damn things against a slow hash? Right, because WPA two is pretty slow in the grand scheme of things. You know, we need like you know as fast as MP five or anything like that. So. Maybe I need to be considering, maybe I should just filter out the stuff I'm not interested in out of my dictionaries before I go and set them up to crack. That said, in AD, maybe someone would put, I hate my uh, job, yeah? So <laughs> it might be worth keeping them in. I don't know. It's up to you. It's your call. Uh, public dumps. They're full of garbage. <laughs> so this is me looking for the source attribute, very common attribute in HTML. And this is out of just a raw rock you done. And you can see, like, who's really going to set their passwords <laughs> to a line of HTML? They're not. Um, okay, you may get the odd developer, maybe, that's just been a bit weird. Um, or the odd pen tester that's done tick or one equals one. That is a bold move if you're doing that on a password uh, change <laughs> form, by the way. <laughs> like, doing that on an update is, woo, danger. Right, so, um, <laughs> but either way, it's not really something that I'm interested in. And I've control C that, right? Because I didn't want a full, full like list of it. Uh, there's loads of it in Rock U. And problem is, Rock U isn't the only one. So CrackStation oh. suffers the same issue. You've got image tags. It's got it's weirdly formatted, and I think um, that's down to just uh, character. I suppose like null characters or, or Unicode characters um, getting in the way. But you can still see there's HTML in there. Um, I don't want that in my dictionaries, so maybe it's worth cleaning. Um, and the problem that popular words have is the problem multiplies. So people base projects off of common word lists. You've got Rocky 2021 in there, massive compendium of word of words created from all these public dumps. Yeah, great. I can guarantee you there's loads of HTML in it. And there's loads of stuff that's irrelevant for me as a as a pen tester doing normal jobs for cracking all, like corporate passwords. Um, and security companies, including my last employer, so <laughs> apologies if I'm sort of like dumping on it a bit, but um, <laughs> security companies are no uh, strangers to this either. They take stuff, base it on classic rock you, and you can guarantee that it suffers the same issues. Rocktastic 12a is a really popular word list, at least in my circles, um, for cracking. It's really massive, yeah? So it's like 1.1 billion words, 13 gigabytes in size. It's huge. Um, and it will get you, don't get me wrong, right? These word lists will get you cracks. They will get you passwords. <clears throat> but will they get you them as fast as, you know, doing a bit of a smarter move? Having having clean dictionaries before you go in to the what, before you start engaging with the crack. Um, adding rule sets, you get problems. Uh, I would, I suppose. Um, so we look at this. Is, I just pick password as an arbitrary thing, and to be honest, Hascap does do some weak password um, guesses itself uh, without needing the dictionary. It'll do some some base guesses. So I think. Uh, password should feature inside of that, but um, just for argument's sake, let's see where the position of the lowercase password first appears in Rocktastic 12a. Well, it appears 168 million words in, all right? So without the rules <coughs> of being applied here, you've already done 168 million guesses against whatever hash you're trying before you've tested the word password against it. Um, it appears again then, for some reason, 
Um, I think I know why, um, but it does duplicate itself inside this list. So I'm not only doing it once, I'm doing it twice. So it slowed me down twice. Crack station's not no different. In fact, it's worse position in the, but technically, in terms of like where it is from the top, which is 891 million words in. Yeah. So now bear in mind, password is not that, not likely to be someone's actual password. Uh, I'd hope not in these days, but I have seen in corporate environments still today where password with a zero exclamation mark and a couple of ones after it is. So before my mutations apply, <laughs> um, I'm still doing 891 million guesses before I even guess that word. If we add rule sets in, so and we take Octastic 12a as an example, so 168 million words in, Add a rule set of dive, so that's 99,092 rules of mutators uh, in total. And we make an assumption here, right? So just for illustration's sake, we make the assumption that all rules in dive are valid mutations of the word password. It's not the case, absolutely not the case, or valid mutations of the words before password, rather. It's not the case. It's going to be a lower number. But just because I'm rubbish at maths, let's just keep the number simple. Uh, we're sort of at 16.6 .6 trillion guesses before we guess the word password um, against our target hash. Now, that might not matter if you're doing something like MD5, NTLM, MD4, etc. They're really, really fast hashes to crack. You've got GPU cycles to spare. Go at it. But the moment you start getting away from that, you start going to um, slower hash forms, then that's where things make a massive difference. So like we saw earlier, where we saw someone trying to crack bcrypt, we're talking, you know, the heat death of the universe before we start testing the word password against our hash. Um, it gets worse <laughs> if you consider context. So we are now in 2022. Um, what is the likelihood that someone will have a password of spring 1990 to spring 1999, because the first 10 passwords of Rocktastic are those. So, if again, if we multiply and consider that they're all valid transformations, um, I'm wasting 43 seconds at my hash rate of WPA2 on my laptop. Right? You think, ah, 43 seconds, nothing in the grand scheme of things. That's the end of 100 passwords into Rocktastic. I'm still testing seasons and years. We're still... They only go up to 2015, because that's when Rocktastic was made. So they don't test anything beyond that. So now I've actually wasted 430 seconds, so over five minutes, yeah, to, to test um, 100 passwords that probably aren't going to hit. Again, this isn't say they won't hit, but it might be unlikely that they would hit based on the target that you're targeting. So let's change the paradigm. Got to, got to do that at business speed. So you need words, not word lists. What I mean by that is you need to be able to curate your word lists into individual. You need to basically clean them up. You need to remove the garbage. You need to uh, dedupe them, not only in themselves, because you'll see uh, duplicates of words in, the, in, in individual word lists, but you need to dedupe them across your entire number of word lists so that at the end you have one one list of individually unique words um, and hopefully a lot of them um, rather than focusing on oh I cracked it as part of rock you oh I cracked it as part of we pass v2 etc etc and there is clearly a need especially if you're doing more than like the, the faster hashes to do maintenance and it's not an easy task and it's not a quick job and you've got to keep on top of it. So, um, what are some of the issues we have with doing this uh, maintenance and and things? It is, ah, uh, darn it, I didn't find my thing. Right, so <laughs> it is. Um, so one of the ones that you come across is locale. Um, just like the meme says, it's a universal translator broken again. Uh, locale is how a computer system understands the characters uh, in a file. Um, and you'll see that uh, characters are encoded differently depending on the locale of the system. So ENGB, for example, isn't going to necessarily worry about umlauts on the characters. Yeah, but DED, UTF-8 will do. Um, 
Um, and there'll be differences between the two. So if we take this example, I've done a sort and a unique of rocky.txt, and I've thrown it into a text file. I've then fixed the uh, locale on a specific locale and done a sort minus u to rocky.txt and sent that to a text file. And I said, hey, there shouldn't be any differences, but can you give me the differences out of those files? And sure enough, I've got differences. Now, those are like showing up as weird characters. That's Unicode, I guess. Um, and it makes sense that those would be in a different order because that's what would have been affected by the locale change. Um, so we can see that if we don't do this, um, and our order, because a lot of a lot of future follow-on tools depend on lists being sorted. So if they're not sorted, what you end up doing is uh, you end up uh, either the tool ignores it, or it won't accept it, or it'll break. It'll result in unexpected behavior. And uh, if I'd read the manual, it tells you this straight away in the man page for sort set lc all to c. <laughs> um, because otherwise it won't do it won't do native by values uh, comparisons it will use the characters so we've got a solution now to to all of our passwords kind of sorting woes well sort of yeah so example command there lc or c sort i use a few extra extra commands there or extra switches to sort of speed it up so i add sort to spawn par uh, four parallel processes because of the bat squat how many cores I wanted it to use on my system. I asked it to limit memory buffers per process to four gigabytes. I asked it to unique, and I asked it to output it to a file. And then I went to bed, and I woke up in the morning, and it was the killer. So what's um killer? Out of memory killer. So um killer <coughs> gets invoked on a Linux system anyway, um, whenever it's a critically low or over, -re over allocated memory on a system. So sort, uh, it tries to be nice. I've set I've set rules on it to be nice, yeah? I'll only take up four gig, etc. Um, but if your system in normal usage outside of the sort job that's going on runs out of memory, it's gonna look like one heck of a tasty process for Ungiller to come along and go, oh, he's arguing a lot, I'll get rid of him. And and it will. And then you'll wake up and be super sad. Um, so, so, okay, so how do we get around that? Well, there's nothing, nothing for it but split. We need to split up uh, large, large word lists into more workable word lists. If you think about it, sort's trying to load the entire word list into memory, and then it's trying to do that. And then it's trying to do a sorting uh, operation on it, which I can only imagine involves multiple arrays. Um, so multiple copies of the same data in memory, <laughs> I guess, in some way. I'm sure there's optimizations there, but it takes up a lot. Um, and so the only approach you can do is split the file. So here, I, before you even try sorting Rocktastic 12a, I've decided to split it out. And I've done it arbitrarily. I've just taken, hey, give me a line now. And you can do split based on byte size, but it doesn't preserve line endings. So you don't want to like chop your password candidates in half, right? So you do it via lines. That's the easiest way of doing it. And all I did was take the total value and I went, oh, you know what? 100 files is workable. I can do that. It's a bit of scripting, but it's all right. So I just divided by 100. So I've got 11 million lines, 11 million passwords in every single one of the files. And that creates 100 files. So straight away, these things are more workable. So I can sort in unique each one of these files. I can sort in unique between them, etc., etc. et cetera. But that's a lot of work. That's a lot of effort and a lot of, a lot of bash script. Um, if only there was another way. <laughs> so, uh, Sinusure Prime developed a tool based upon two tools inside of a Hashcat user. It's called RLI and RLI2. RLI, remove list or remove line. Um, that's what I think it stands for. Um, <laughs> so they made remove line ng or remove list ng. Um, it can dedupe single files, so it can do the sorting and uniquing. It can remove words based on a single list, so if you wanted to get rid of swear words or whatever out of there, you could have a list of swear words and try it on that. Better yet, it can sort and unique files across directories. So you can have your large, mega, amazingly clean and targeted word list, 
um, or a series of them in one file. And then literally when you get a new dump, a new public leak or something comes out or a new source of passwords, you can go, hey, RLING, here's a new file I want to import into my, my mega word list. Can you tell me on remove any words I already know about and then just add the ones I need? Yeah. So if we do that, and I try this <laughs> against the split out Rocktastic 12A, and here, all I'm doing is I'm taking the first 11 million passwords and saying, hey, can you put any that do not exist in any of the other parts of Rocktastic 12A? So I'm comparing it against the other 99 files and saying, put the unique ones in a file for me. And then I'll do that for all 99 files. And I should have, at the end of it, a file with nothing but clean, single, unique words in it. And I do it, and we see at the end, it's removed 4.9 million words from the 11 million I started with, because they already appear somewhere else in Rotastic. So the password thing was kind of like a teller, but if we look harder, how much time we're wasting per word, <laughs> uh, 4.9 million in the first 11, of testing words we've already tested inside of the same word list is a bit mental. Um, so yeah, so the need to kind of like prune and clean up uh, word list is huge. Um, and here we've got what I, what I said earlier is like, so okay, say Rocktastic 12A is my gold word list. And I get rocky.txt, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I just want all the words I don't know about in rocky, that I don't know about, to be added. And it's found 3,000 <laughs> 3, words that aren't in Rocktastic 12a. And if you look at the words, they're actually all the special characters, they're all like Unicode, etc. And that's why I suspect when Rocktastic 12a was sorted and unique, that locale was the issue, and locale just, like, that, that issue caused them to drop it on the floor. So... Uh, so I've just regained 3,000 words, but I haven't imported 14 million <laughs> words I already knew about. Um, so yeah, so. Yeah. <sighs> this is one of the biggest excuses I used to get back when I was in, uh, in there to you, was, oh, but it works, right? I don't, don't deny, I do not deny big wordless crack hashes, right? You, they have to. Is it scientifically impossible for it not to like be somewhat successful? Um, and I ain't got time to change dicks and stuff. I've got I've got work to do. I've got to do actual like pen testing, password cracking, meh, whatever. I just got to get on and start doing the hacker planet. Um, the problem is, is this time doesn't necessarily be, have to be out of your engagement. It could be done. It could be done as like a precursor to this stuff. If you organise your word list in advance then you already have um, a good start in terms of optimizing the attack. So you're not spending as long cracking passwords. You've got more time to do your job <laughs> or do the, do the actual hacking or the fun bit. Um, and you'll get results hopefully quicker over time. Um, and one of the ways you can do this, if you've already prepped in advance with your word lists, is use symlinks, right? And use alphabet. <laughs> so alphabetically order them, the symlinks in the folder, and use Globin, because Hashcat will support it, and use a star at the end. So Hashcat now will automatically go through my test dictionary folder and go A, B, C, and it will just test those word lists in that order. So I could I could prioritize all of my custom dictionaries I've got. I'm not going to bother running, like, you know, dedupe or whatever on my custom dictionaries. But I could do all the custom dictionaries, and then at the end I can go, hey, you know what, take my lovely um, curated... Uh, well-ordered word list and chuck that at the end because it's massive, but throw that in and see what we can get. So, summing up, garbage in equals garbage out. We need to split our word list into smaller lists. There's no penalty for that because we can use glob in to, to get them back. Um, eliminate duplicate words, but not just in the dictionaries, but against everything. And we need to focus the dictionaries at the target, so we need to apply some intelligence about what are we trying to crack, uh, what do we think it would be, and is it suited? Like, is there any point in me trying a Spanish dictionary against I don't know, the UK government website or something? I don't know. You, you know what I mean? Like trying to target it more to your, to your target. 
And remember to fix your lookout. So, we covered straight mode in Hatchcat, but Hatchcat also supports one of the most common modes, which is, is masks as well. And it's very, very common to see someone just do question mark A a bunch of times, in this case, eight times. And in this, in this command, we can see one, they've missed out minus minus increment. So the only thing they're testing is all eight character words <laughs> that could be made out of the question mark A uh, character set. What does question mark A mean? Well, it means lower upper digit and special, right? It's a special um, master that relates to that. But special isn't what you think it is necessarily. Special is very American. So special contains those characters and those characters alone. It doesn't contain a pound sign. Well, it contains a hash. I suppose that's an American pound sign, but it doesn't contain the pound sterling sign. It doesn't contain the euro currency <laughs> sign. Um, and it doesn't contain up, upside down question marks, upside down uh, exclamation marks, etc. So how do we get around that? Well, we can specify custom masks. So we can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make my own special character set. I'm going to set, use minus one, um, specify the first, first custom mask. And then instead of doing question mark A in all of these things, I could even use minus two and say, hey, do lower upper digit and then do one. Yeah, to get all of my special characters. Um, or Hashcat knows this is an issue and they provide quite graciously uh, common character sets for common languages already in their char sets folder. So you can add special characters from these uh, character sets to your masks. So just an example of like the efficiency of masks and like how powerful they are. So password one exclamation mark maps for ma mask it. One U, seven L's, so lowercase, one digit, one special. But so does Anj Galak, three at. Um, it would be found by the same mask. Yeah? So I find all the weak passwords, password one or uh, whatever. <coughs> Plus I also find a password that would probably never feature as part of a dictionary. Um, that mask of bug is number 11 in the NetSpy Top 40 Masks in 2015, which is a resource I'll put a link in my presentation. And if you need a link sent to you, let me know, I'll send it. Um, it's really good. Nice list of 40, 40 masks, time sorted, quickest to slowest, um, that gives you real good hits. <coughs> Utility of them. So I mentioned about country specific attacks. You can use uh, hybrid attacks. So you can use minus six, which will prefix a, a mask to a diction, to a dic all the dictionary words. You can use minus seven, which will uh, um, suffix a mask to every dictionary word. So say you wanted to just test the year 2022, you can set up a mask to do that and then run all your dictionary words with 2022 added on the end pretty easily. Um, it can also make a difference with country-specific attacks or cracks. Like I said, use the um, already provided character sets and use it to append extra special characters at the end if you want. There's some curios about it. So the default mask, if you don't, if you forget, and I've done this and I know others have done this, if you forget to give a mask and you're in attack mode three, Hashcat will take your hashes <coughs> and Hashcat will look incredibly busy and it will quite happily spend the next six hours cracking away on 15 character passwords of that format. Um, you don't get an error. You just <laughs> It just goes, yeah, I'm, I've started the crack job. You get six hours of probably worthless cracking because it's doing a 15 character mask of that, of that uh, construction. Um, so just be aware of that. If you are doing minus A3, make sure you specify a mask at the end of it or you'll regret it. So um, <laughs> there's the two URLs for NetSpy, really good resources. Also CoreLogic, they published a hundred of the most common mas uh, masks they've uh, generated using, there was a, a DARPA project, I think it was. Uh, called Pathwell. There's an interesting talk on that as well on that website, probably worth checking out. Equally, Hashcat comes with default, um, like AD default complexity masks as part of the Hashcat release. So like, you know, the one upper, one lower, one digit, one special. It's already got masks for that. Um, so that'd be cool. Generate your own. So generating them, uh, there's a tool called Pack. 
That's when Mars is cracked all good. Super important to keep a record of your planes. <coughs> and uh, just checking time. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's super important to keep a record of your planes if you're doing this. When I say planes, I mean the passwords that you've successfully cracked, okay? Your plain texts. Um, they're the commands that you use. So you basically feed your plain texts into StatsGen, which generates some statistics around it, such as most common character, etc., and positioning and things. You feed that output into Mask Generator, and it'll output a HD mask file. Now, one of the lovely things with Mask Gen is you can benchmark, you use the benchmark mode in Hashcat to get your maximum hashes per second, or PPS, I can't remember what that represents, planes per second maybe, in Mask Gen. Put that number into PPS when you do your mask gen dot pi and give it a target time. 3600 is 3600 seconds, so one hour. And it will generate every mask in fastest to slowest order that it thinks that my rig with that benchmark speed can crack or cover exhaustively within that time period. So if I'm at the end of an engagement and I know I've got another three hours left on this job, I could do target time of uh, 600 times three. I'm not going to do that now. Um, yeah, <laughs> should have picked now up. There we go. Um, I could do target time, specify the target time, and um, have it generate the masks for me. It's pretty quick, as far as I'm aware. Um, and then set my cracking going. Yeah, and I know that I should get a good clearance of. I've, I've at least applied some form of statistical analysis. Uh, to my approach of cracking these passwords rather than just flinging rock you at it. Um, how to use it, instead of specifying question mark A, specify the file maybe the, the HD mask file. What is hashes? Uh, genuine quote there. Um, so, uh, what happens if you've got a hash that you do not know what it is? So, I know you pop the web shell, uh, uh, web app rather, dump the database and you've got a bunch of hashes, you've no idea. Well, Hashcat's got an identify function. So what that does, it will run every parser in Hashcat against the hashes that you've got, and it will return any that accept what you've fed it. So, I mean, it's a start of a 10. I can tell you right now that none of the hashes I fed it were MySQL 4.1 or Radmin 2. <laughs> they were all MD4, MD5, SHA-1, that kind of thing. But, so it mixed results, but at least gives you a start for 10. Um, something better though, and the X find. So again, lads from Sinusure Prime, or rather actually I think Waffle, uh, cracking name as well, because it looks like I just said tag Waffle on my quote there, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Waffle created a tool called MDX find. MDX find is, is designed to run massive numbers of unsolved hashes that you have no idea what they are against very large word lists. And it effectively brute forces algorithms in a parallel way. So I think it supports over 500 algorithms. Um, and it does that massively parallel. It is CPU bound. But if you think of it like Hashcat will crack hashes, MDX find cracks algorithms. So what is that 32 car? Uh, hex stream, no idea, right? MD4, MD5, NTLM, who knows? Um, well, MDX find will know. So I fed it a bunch of random hashes on the side there, and we can see I've sent it uh, a word list. I actually sent it against Rocky, and it completed it pretty fast. And we can see it's identified MD5, MD4, SHA1, SHA256, NTLM. And you think, oh, well, that's it, that's five hashes, five things. But it's also found 678, or oh, yeah, uh, 678. Is carried on, right? It will return anything that it's able to resolve to a genuine word. So it's done MTLM, but it's also reported that that hash, H6C, is MD4 UTF 16, which anyone who knows what MTLM is, that's MTLM. That's the format of MTLM. Um, so it reports it twice almost. MD5 rev, so it's even reversed the hash in the case that maybe the hash itself is modified. Um, and it's and, and it's returned the password of it, it's backwards, but it's returned that oh yeah, it matches against MD5 reversed, SHA1 reversed. It'll do things like SHA1 truncated or SHA256 or 512 truncated. So if it's just chopped off, 
it'll still try. Um, it'll do things like uh, MD5 inside of SHA-1, inside of SHA-256, inside of name your, name your hashing algorithm. It will iterate hashing algorithms over hashing algorithms. So my thoughts are with this is if you pop a website and you can create a user account, you create a user account with a password of whatever you want, like a Canary token, you take the hash once you've gone in and you got your DB done once you've created your user account, take your hash, you take the word you set it to, and then you go, hey, MDX find, go find me the actual algorithm that's being used here. And it will come back pretty quick. Um, like I said, it is CPU bound. And as cool as that is, it's not a hash cat or John replacement. Um, it's very, it's just another tool in your arsenal to be wary and to be aware of. Command and, and the documentation for this is terrible in that there's very little out there. It's very geared towards crack me if you can challenge output, which is slightly different, I suppose, mindset. Um, it's quite difficult to get to grips with. I'll give you a rundown of this. This is like the basic command that's on most tutorials you find out there. <laughs> but I'll give you a quick rundown of this. So um, minus H all means hey and the X find try all your known hashing algorithms. Any supported hashing algorithms, try them all. But you can stack them up, right? So I then do minus H, but he goes, ah, but don't do any that are salted. So I'm not <coughs> passing a salt file in, uh, salt.txt. Don't do any salted hashes. Don't do any username hashes. So some, some hashing algorithms can mess with like users and salts or put the salt and user together in different ways, etc. MDX fine can cope with that, but I don't want to deal with that right now. Don't try that. MD5X is any nested MD5. So for example, if the hashing algorithm that it picks, it could do like MD5 inside of MD5 up to five times, for example, yeah? But I've asked it to iterate five times, which then means it's doing MD5 inside of MD5, five times, times five. So that could take up a lot of computing power, a lot of churning. So I'm not interested in MD5 in MD5 multiple, multiple times. And I think the minus I5 will take care of MD5 in MD5 uh, itself without needing to consider it as a special hashing algorithm itself. And the same with crypt. Anyone familiar with Unix crypt, for example? Is literally MD5 multiplied thousands of times. Um, I've skipped all of those algorithms in this case. Minus F, give it a hash, hash file, and then give it a dictionary of words that I want it to go against. Um, yeah. So evolve or get better at stuff. Uh, where do I find all this information? Forms on Hashcat, forms on Hashkiller, yeah, hashkiller.io. Loads of crap me if you can challenges and hobbyists hang out on there. Netmux.com has written a, Netmux has written a couple of good books on hash cracking. They've got strategies in there. They discuss prints. Uh, they discuss uh, things like purple rain attacks by trusted set and things like that. So they discuss more strategization around how to crack pass, uh, passwords. Uh, it's really worth a read. Um, blog.sunnishieldprime.com. They do write-ups when they do crack me if you can challenges and you find little like, snippets of, oh, that's all I didn't know, know about before, such as Arling or R-L-I-N-G. Uh, one of the websites I get some dictionaries from, wpasexstanev.org. He specializes in WPA2 cracking uh, handshakes and he publishes some of his dictionaries. One of the ones I really like is the Wikipedia EN. It's got apparently an English dump of Wikipedia in the dictionary, which is quite nice. Hashes.org, rip. Um, so, unfortunately, many, many months ago, it went offline and it hasn't come back. It might come back. If it does come back, it was an amazing resource. You public dumps, both found planes, so you could give your word list, you could generate your word list from it, and hash lists that aren't found yet, um, you know, hashes that aren't found and solved, were listed there, so it was good to practice and to play about with. Really sad that it's gone, actually, to be honest. It's quite, quite a loss. Um, if you're going to do MDX find, there's a Bible being written by a chap called uh, 0xLine or 0 um, PW. Um, go and have a look at that. Uh, that will talk you through some more advanced uh, methods of using it. There's also videos out there by WinXP5421 giving <laughs> talks in America with MDX find, etc. So you may get some more information that way. 
Uh, one of the things I do once I do all my password cracking is a bit of analysis. So another shout out to the uh, founder or one of the founders of Steelcon, Digi Ninja, with his Pipple toolkit. Hugely expandable. Um, I myself have checkers, custom checkers myself, based on the company I work for. So, you know, I do password analysis based on if someone, I work for an insurance company, if someone has a password of a password that contains the word insurance or a variant of it, I want to know how popular that is in my company. Um, so it's quite good and you can customize it in that way. And a couple of Twitters worth of follow for password cracking tips and tricks. So let's say when it's B5421, Chicken Man's really nice on Twitter. He'll reach out and help you as much as possible. Stealthsploit, another nice guy. He's got a training course dedicated to password cracking, if any of you are interested. Um, I think he's in the US. <laughs> so whether he'll come over to the UK or whether you can do it or not, I don't know. But he's, he, his company's actually selling a training course on it. Jim Gosme, as, as opposed to, uh, I think his name is XPOIP, I think. And you'll find him all over the Hashcat forums. Really useful resource. And Sino Prime, whoops, said Daisy. <laughs> Sino Prime is the actual group, the uh, crack me if you can kind of like uh, CTF uh, <laughs> winners. So, I come to the end, but what time is it now? 5.16. Are they? Okay, so I'm going to call it there then in that case. Uh, but if you do want to find me, uh, you can just go to my website or hit me up on Twitter. More than happy to uh, answer any questions that come in. I'll just double check now and see what come in. Uh, okay, yeah, so what is Star Trek? <laughs> right, a show known to man. Uh, okay. Is it true I have a massive word list? I have many, many word lists, Phil. Many, many word lists. Many, many words. Uh, <laughs> what rule set can I add to Dive and Rocky to speed up cracking? Tom, Tom, Tom is is my arch nemesis uh, in my old company. Uh, he was one of the ones who who was like, "Oh, it's too it's too much effort." But yeah, great. Okay, thanks for the troll. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's Captain Picard. Thanks. Uh, and I think where is it? I think. That is it. Sweet. So, I've got a thank you for your time. Question.